Uh, hey everyone, Russ Thornton. Uh, welcome to another episode of Women's Retirement Radio. Today, uh, I'm excited to introduce Andreas Mazabel. Uh, he is with Trust and Will, and we've got a lot of cool things to discuss. But uh, before we jump into that, uh, Andreas, welcome. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks so much, Russ. Appreciate you having me on. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Andreas Mazabel. We live uh, here in San Diego, California. Actually born and raised in, uh, in Colombia, down in South America. So ever since we immigrated here to the U.S. about 22 years ago, it's been, um, San Diego's been home. So super grateful to, to live here and looking forward to the conversation today. Wow. Do you ever get back to Colombia? I do. I'm super fortunate. So we still have a ton of family back there. My grandparents and extended family. So at least once a year. And it was super interesting with, with uh, the timing of the pandemic last year. We're in Colombia for my mom's birthday, for 60th birthday. And literally when we got back within a couple of weeks, they closed the borders and everything. So um, we got lucky to be able to come back. Uh, so yes, we once a year at least, and I, I love going back home. That's wonderful. Do, do your family down in Colombia get up here to visit you very often or have they in the past or do they pretty much stick close to home or a little bit of both? You know, they typically, we are the ones that go down there. They've, gosh, I think my grandparents the last 20 years have come up here two or three times. So it's just a lot harder for them to make the trip up here. So yeah. um, it's easier for us to go down there. And it's a great excuse for me to go and uh, take some time off and, and hang out with the fam. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. I, I I've never been to Colombia, but I know people that have, and they said it's just a, a wonderful place to visit, beautiful, and a lot of culture and a lot of uh, a lot of neat things to do and see. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So, um, tell us a little something that uh, tell us something about yourself, Andreas, that maybe uh, most people wouldn't know, even 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 maybe some of your closest friends. Ooh, closest friends. That's a good one. Gosh, I would say some of that most people don't know about me. I was going to say that I'm a huge salsa dancer, but my closest friends know that. Um, but uh, gosh, I always wanted to be a firefighter growing up. <laughs> really? Up until I was like fifth, I don't know, early teenage years. I like really wanted to be a firefighter. And I have no idea why, because I not a huge fan of heights and just I'm very risk averse. So I don't know where that, uh, where that interest came from, but anyways, we'll talk a little bit about my career, but ended up in a, in a totally different industry than, than what I thought I wanted to do my whole life. And that, yeah, that's interesting. Thanks for sharing. And, and arguably, arguably you could argue that you're fighting a different kind of fire these days, but, um, <laughs> clearly, uh, clearly, uh, not, uh, not quite the same thing. Um, that, that is, that's a good way to look at it. That's yeah, right. Yeah. So speaking of your career, why don't you, uh, why don't you start by describing what it is you and trust and will do, but, but do it in simple terms. Like you were explaining it to a five-year-old. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So trust and will, we started roughly about three and a half years ago. And in essence, in, in very simple matters, we are making estate planning accessible for, for people in the United States. 60% of people, I would argue, honestly, that's probably higher, don't have any estate planning in place. So what we've done is created a TurboTax-like model, if you will, but for estate planning, in which we're allowing families to say, hey, estate planning isn't as complicated or expensive as, as I thought. And I understand the importance of it. So we're essentially just helping clients have an option that's easier, better to understand, and, and most importantly, uh, more affordable for people to actually create very, very important documents. Got it. And, and while you and I know what you mean by estate planning, for our listeners, could you just explain that a little further, like what's involved in a typical estate plan? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So, you know, typically, what, like when we talk about what is estate planning, it's, it essentially outlines what is going to happen or what's going to happen to your assets when you pass and outside of passing it also um, has and creates some very important documents if you were to be uh, incapacitated so um, for example your power of attorneys your living will so it essentially gives gives legal document or it creates the legal documents that essentially gives instructions on who gets access to your assets, 
how do they, how do you, for example, distribute your assets to your children? And then more importantly, this is a big, big triggering point for most people. It's when you, when you have kids, right? So all the way up until they're, they're uh, 18 years of age, if something's to happen to you and, you know, husband, wife are together or, you know, single parent, whatever the case might be, having documents in place that you have a legal guardian for your children. So think of it the way I always look at it is, you know, think of it as, you know, we, we work so hard and, and we have people in our life that we care so much about. And it essentially, it's kind of like your, your plan on, Hey, what, what am I going to, going to leave behind to make sure that they're taken care of? And I, I'd like to, I'd like to reiterate what you said earlier. Um, and I tend to agree with you. I think you said the statistics around 60%. I, I think it's probably higher than that as well. Yeah. Um, so let's call it 60%, at least 60% of Americans don't have, uh, of American adults don't have an estate plan in place, meaning they don't have a will, they don't have powers of attorney, they don't have a living will or advanced healthcare directive. Um, they haven't, um, in the case of having minor children in, in the household, they haven't appointed guardians. So clearly these are important documents. Um, and it's, it's really, it's really actually kind of scary to think about the risk and exposure that the average American has without having these documents or, or for in more simple terms, these instructions in place. Yeah. 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 No, absolutely. And, you know, uh, before, before trust and well, I spent roughly gosh, 13, 13, 14 years in private banking. And that's, that's where, when I, when I came across the opportunity at trust and will, I, I jumped on it because I saw the impact of what happens when you pass and you don't have these instructions in place Right. So give you an example here in California, you know, if, if you pass probate is extremely complex, expensive, and it takes a while. So if you're to pass without having an actual trust uh, in place here in California, probate's going to take anywhere from 12 to 18 months. Give you an example. If you own a property here in California and California is very expensive uh, give you an example, million dollar home. And it's not, you know, it's your, your total value of the home. If that home is to go through probate, that's going to cost about $50,000. And literally with the pandemic, uh, last time we heard from our, from Patrick, who's our head of legal, that full process could take about 24 months to go through. So in banking, I used to have to set up, uh, estate accounts in which you're essentially putting the assets in an account that's kind of frozen, if you will. You don't really have access to it. You can't make distributions to beneficiaries. So it's, it's a huge, huge, outside of obviously the emotional pain that people are dealing with, with the loss of a loved one, you're now dealing with a very complicated process that takes a while so the importance of having these documents for us, it's, 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 it's crucial. It really just provides such peace of mind for, for families. And uh, it's, it's many people say this, it's one of the best gifts you can leave behind is to have a plan that's been thought <clears throat> and executed and it's been updated because um, it really makes life so much easier for, for your loved ones. Yeah, I, I you know couldn't agree more, and and I guess I guess to dig into that a little bit more. So I think most folks, Andreas, are familiar with at least the concept of a will, and I think most people think, all right, well, in order to get a will, I need to call an attorney and you know maybe spend several hundred or maybe several thousand dollars to go through this process, um, which frankly it probably isn't always depending on the attorney probably isn't always user friendly uh, for lack of a better term so how does trust and will how do, how do they address um, or solve estate planning for uh, for uh, people out there listening and do it in a way that's both uh, typically more affordable and typically easier for uh, the people that want to put these important documents into place yeah yeah that's a good question so well, I'll give you an example. If you, the, the, the average American, you know, specifically, for example, you, you know, your audience for us, right? So, you know, women that are going into retirement, uh, most, most 
women and, and I guess just people in general just don't have very complicated estate planning needs. So what do I mean by complicated is, you know, maybe above the estate threshold, right? So uh, over 11 million for, for single, 22 for a married couple. And the way we are helping really make it, as you said, more affordable and simple is, 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 is really one, creating state-specific documents. So as you mentioned, Russ, like how, how does someone create a, doc, like a, a legal document? Well, one, it's all about the content that goes in it. So you have to be sure that whoever's writing the estate plans is a licensed attorney, knows the estate planning laws really well. And then two, when they, when they change, which isn't, isn't very common, but when they do, it's essentially making sure that they're updated. And then what we've, what we've found is, you know, people that have, you know, 10, $15 million, they have the estate plan in place because they understand how important it is for tax purposes, inheritance, all that. But for the average American, they, they are just typically not proactive to go out and say, let's go spend two, three, five thousand dollars $5,000 for a trust. That's kind of typically the, the average here in, in Southern California for a trust. So, so what we are essentially offering is, is clients the ability or in families the ability to say, hey, I, I, I understand the importance of an estate plan. My situation is very simple and straightforward. How could I go about doing that? So what we've done and kind of talked about this in the beginning, but the, the online platform and the way we've actually done it, Russ, is we have the ability that it's online, but we've actually complemented with live customer support. See, uh, we strongly believe that one of the biggest barriers of estate planning is the lack of education. Lack of education is, is such a big pain point. So how can we, one, better educate a client in terms of what is estate planning? What's the impact of it? And then two, provide options. Every state is a little different. Every family is a little different in terms of where their assets are held. Is it a taxable account, retirement account, whatever the case might be. But essentially being able to to provide the options to say, hey, this is a trust and this is how a trust works. This is a will. This is how a will works. And then really depending on that specific family, being able to say, great, you know, this is a, a good starting point for you or this is the you know, for example, maybe someone that's going into retirement that, you know, they've saved most of their life. They don't have an estate plan. That is, you know, a trust is a very, very popular product for someone going into retirement because they've already accumulated uh, all that wealth. Yeah. I, and I, I would, uh, I would echo what you said. I mean, you guys have, in, in my opinion, have done a great job creating educational resources. So it's not just a here's a solution or a product, um, take it or leave it. Um, I think you guys actually go to great lengths to help people understand their choices and, um, and help them make more informed decisions about what's right for their situation, which I, I really appreciate. And I think a lot of our listeners would certainly appreciate that as well. Um, thinking of trust and will in the kind of, uh, in the overall uh, estate planning landscape, um, we've already talked about, you know, uh, people can clearly go to an attorney um, to get this work done. Um, they can also uh, approach uh, you guys, Trust and Will, uh, through your online platform. Um, I've had some clients go through this process, um, and they found it to be very, uh, very easy um, and very self-explanatory, uh, and we're very happy with the, the, uh, the outcome. Could you, uh, could you tell us a little bit more about, um, and, and you've kind of touched on this um, already, but could you speak a little bit more about um, who trust and will might be a really great fit for, for estate planning? And then after we touch on that, I'd, I'd like to maybe identify um, people who it might not be the best fit for. Yeah, that's a great question. So who is trust and will a good fit for? So typically what we've seen is clients under the $5 million in assets is a, is a really, really good fit. Cause anytime we're going above that, there might be more advanced planning that needs to be taken into consideration. And then, uh, gosh, when we look at, uh, we, we have all these statistics, but I, I believe o- almost 80% of members of trust and will. And since we started the company, we've helped a little bit over 200,000 families, um, over 80% of them are parents. So obviously they value the importance of, of having a plan in place for, for, their, uh, for their kids. T- 
two is uh, a lot of homeowners. You know, a, a primary residence is typically one of the largest assets that a family owns. So that is that is a, a, a big one as well. And then and then from the rest, we kind of have the, the, the two buckets, if you will. We've had the buckets of the like most of our members are 33 to 55 years old. And then the second bucket, which is also a big part of all of our members, have actually been the, the ones that are going into retirement and have been putting this off for years and years. So being able to really look at great, I've saved my whole life for, for this uh, retirement age and all my goals and aspirations of what this next chapter of my life looks like. Um, but making sure that, that, you know, that they have that plan in place. Um, and, and based on, based on those, kind of numbers and figures, I mean, people that have five, you know, a, a, a net worth of $5 million or less, um, you know, kind of 33 to 55 uh, with a with another significant group in kind of the 55 plus range, homeowners, parents, I mean, that clearly you're addressing a, a pretty large market. And, and, you know, I would venture to say most, most people out there, most adults out there would certainly fall within those, uh, you know, within those, those numbers. Uh, would you agree? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, but, but clearly, as you've already stated, there are going to be some cases where maybe trust and will is not the best fit. So could you maybe uh, give us a couple of examples on, on where, where uh, a, a client or a family actually going and, and working with a, an attorney one-on-one might be a better solution? Yeah, absolutely. So I think one, anytime you're looking at advanced estate planning, so, you know, give you an example, the common trust that, that we get questions on are around, you know, special needs trust, irrevocable trust. Um, those two are pretty common that we get questions on. So right off the bat, that those are trusts that we, that we certainly don't offer. But just, I, I would say just to give you a little bit more specifics, I think one, when you're looking at, you know, maybe a family that is above the $5 million uh, in net worth and there's, you know, uh, maybe two, in some cases, three marriages that they've, um, that they've had, that is definitely something that we always recommend that they actually talk to an attorney because the customiz- customization needed within the estate plan uh, is definitely not, trust and will may not be the right fit for them. And then when we always look at just, you know, being able to, to, to get legal advice, right? So we have states that we do offer attorney support in, meaning that we can actually have a licensed attorney in that state provide legal advice, right? Um, what we do in, in all 50 states is able to provide live customer support, right? So uh, as you talked about the education of the what is of estate planning, but in some states, we don't have attorney support, and it's something we're scaling very, very quickly. But if, if we had a client, for example, I don't know, let's look at um, Florida. We don't have Florida uh, attorney support, but it's, it's coming later this year. And someone needed actual legal advice, that's where we have a limitation today, right? So that's where they, they, they could maybe bit benefit from actually working with an attorney, depending on their situation. And then, you know, for example, business owners, Um, we have a ton of business owners that are using trust and will, but if it's a more complex business structure, uh, if you have, for example, various different business partners and, you know, the, the, the business is structured in a certain way, you know, they could definitely benefit from, from talking to an actual uh, attorney, getting legal advice and being able to draft a more, I wouldn't say comprehensive because our plans are very comprehensive for the right type of family, but a more just advanced specific plan depending on the needs uh, behind that. Got it. That's helpful. And I, and I think that makes sense. I mean, it sounds like uh, blended families, business owners, more complex situations or, uh, or uh, people that maybe need some more customization or some more um, handholding from a, from a legal yep. advice perspective. Is that, is that fair? That is spot on. That is correct. Yep. Perfect. Got it. Well, th- yeah, thanks for, thanks for kind of outlining that for us. So um, I, I think you mentioned earlier, you've had, how, how many clients or, or members have gone through the trust and will system so far? 
200,000. We just crossed that mark, I believe two, two months ago. So it's probably at two, 215 ish. So super proud of the work that we're, that we're doing to, um, just to, to, to provide that peace of mind for families. Yeah. So among 200 plus thousand clients, um, uh, is is there is there a particular client success story or a case that you're familiar with that kind of sticks out to you as like being a exemplary of of just like the the value and the benefit of of using trust and will? That's a great one. You know, last year during the pandemic, obviously very very challenging times for 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 everyone. We as a company wanted to really give back to healthcare workers because, you know, we, uh, Cody, who's Cody Barber, who's a CEO and co-founder, his, his wife is, uh, is a nurse and we all have, you know, tons of nurses in our lives. And we just kept seeing and hearing the stories of what they were dealing with to be able to care for, for, for people. So what we did Russ, and something that just stands out that we, we just, know the impact that we did but we offered complimentary wills to healthcare workers and when we launched it i mean we're, we're still a young company so we're like okay you know there's going to be a couple hundred you know a couple thousand we ended up actually the word ended up spreading so much in the healthcare community that we ended up providing i think around twelve thousand complimentary wills to healthcare workers and the feedback that we would get from them of creating the, the, the documents was they just, it meant so much to them. It's something that they've, they've obviously always thought about getting, but when they actually saw, and, and no one was expecting the pandemic to happen, but especially for them to be thrown into the situation that they were, there was fear. They had fear for their own personal health for their family. So that's the one that really comes to mind is, is hearing the stories from nurses and, and, and frontline healthcare workers on, on what that meant to them to be able to have that in place. What a great, I mean, what a great story and, and effort and focus on, on, you know, from the company. I, I think that's, I think that, well, thanks for sharing that. I think that's, I think that's wonderful and, and timely and, um, you know, helping out the, helping out the helpers, uh, so to speak. I think that's, uh, I think that's a pretty cool, a pretty cool story and certainly a success. So thanks for, uh, thanks for sharing that. Yeah. We uh, felt like it was the least that we could do with, 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 with everything going on. Yeah. In the time you've been with Trust and Will, um, what's, what's been most surprising um, about the work you do uh, in the company and, and then the work that the company uh, does kind of uh, as a whole? What, what, what's, what have you found most surprising? How much we fear the conversation around death. And, and when you say we, we're, you're talking about just people in general? Yeah. Yeah. I think just people in general. Yeah. So I, I you know, it's, it's one of those things that if, if, if we shift our mindset around being able to have the conversation and accepting it, I think that's just, it, it, it's so powerful. It's so powerful to be able to just acknowledge that. And then too, and, and I guess, I mean, I'm surprised, but you know, now that I'm in, you know, working and this is what I do every single day. I mean, I, it's, it's, I understand it now why there's so much fear. And then in terms of the actual company, Ross, man, it's, I previously JP Morgan, Wells Fargo for 13 years, you know, huge, huge companies, right? Obviously, um, I value working here so much because of how much they, the, the importance that they have on family first. And I wasn't expecting that from like a small startup because I was like, okay, well, great. I mean, it's going to be like work, 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 but it's, they like, I've just learned so much around giving back to your employees, empowering your employees. So that's definitely the most surprising thing for me since, since I came over to the company. That's pretty, yeah, that's pretty cool. I, I, I agree. I, I would think that the typical startup culture would be, you know, 
live and breathe work, spend, yeah. you know, 15, 18 hours a day, a day at the office and, um, you know, basically kind of live at your desk or in front of your computer uh, or, or work from work from home, I guess, uh, in, in pandemic times. But still, uh, yep. that's uh, <laughs> that's that's nice and refreshing to hear. Talk uh, talk to me, Andreas, a little bit more about the actual trust and will process. So let's say uh, let's say that I've heard about you guys or someone introduced me to you and um, you you've told me about the benefits and and why I'd you know be kind of silly not to go through the process and, and put these you know legal instructions in place for myself and my family. So let's say that I wanted to to start the process. How, how does it how does it work? Yeah. So essentially how, how it works, it's, it's, you know, one, think of it as like a triple tax. So first things first, it's going to be say, great, you're going to come in, create an account. And then most, we can have two buckets in terms of, you know, we have people that come to us and say, I know exactly what I'm looking for. I know that I need the revocable living trust, or we have the other type, the other bucket, which is, I, I have no idea. <laughs> I am not sure what I need. So, so first step is really answering a set of questions, Russ, that's going to help educate the client, the, the prospect at that point in terms of what, the, what might be the best starting point in terms of doing a trust or starting with the will in hopes to eventually graduate into a trust as assets grow or, or whatever the case might be. And then from there, right off the bat, we, we actually have live customer support now seven days a week. So right off the bat, if someone's like, hey, I want to just talk to someone right off the bat, get some questions answered about around estate planning, we have that available. So uh, someone's able to either chat in, they can schedule a phone call and just talk to us. Just say, hey, this is my first time setting up an estate plan. What are my options? How does this work? Or... Uh, we have the option where a client's like, hey, I, I'm ready to go. Like I have all my questions uh, answered and and I am ready to set up my trust or the will. And essentially, Russ, what we've essentially done uh, and it's we have a very, very talented team on both the engineering team, but especially on the design. What we've essentially done is estate planning in some cases can be very complicated. Most people think it's very complicated. So what we've really done is, is broken out the whole system and process into four sections. So, you know, you're going to start with your basics. So you, obviously your name, date of birth, all that good stuff is going in there. Then we're going to talk about your assets. That's where you're plugging in all your assets. And then you're going to be looking at distributions, right? So distributions to your children, how you want those distributions to happen. Uh, if you want, uh, for example, uh, gifts and then charities, you can also include, uh, include that in the estate plan. And then, and then we'll talk about final arrangements as well um, as part of that. But really think of it as, as a one question per screen. So we never want to make someone feel that it's an, an intimidating process. We've really simplified it. And as you're answering the question, you can save, continue, you can log out, you can log back in. And then Russ, what we've, what we've actually done, which is very unique, we get this question often as to why, but we don't, we don't charge up front. We want to make sure one, people are very comfortable with the product and the process. We allow someone to go through the full process, start to finish all the way until you can actually review documents before you actually submit the payment. And then once you review documents, you're like, hey, this, this, this looks great. This is exactly what I was looking for. That's when you actually submit the payment. And then we, uh, we, we're still physically mailing out the estate plan. Obviously, uh, most or you, they have the option to actually download the PDF right off the bat if they want to. But it's actually a very, uh, very professional looking folder that we send out. We get great feedback on it. And then from there, it's getting it notarized. That is definitely the, the most important part of the whole process, or one of the most important parts of the process is, is making sure you're notarizing the documents. And then we've made that uh, very easy. So we provide instructions on what needs to get notarized and then instructions on funding the trust. That's super important if, if, uh, if a client got a trust is being able to transfer whatever assets should be transferred over. So uh, we provide that uh, as well. And then 
anyone can reach out to us even after they've, you know, w- once they receive documents, if they have questions around, Hey, how do I do this? Or how do I do that? Whatever the case might be, we always lead with, with, um, with customer support. So making sure that people understand the process. And from there, um, most in, in my experience in banking, gosh, I would, I would, you know, anytime I was setting up a trust account, I would get feedback all the time. like, Andreas, I, I need to talk to my attorney. It's been seven years. My trust is outdated and it doesn't, it doesn't do you any good. It's great that you have a trust, but if it's outdated, it's not going to do you any good. So what we've done to help alleviate that problem is essentially giving a, a customer the ability to make changes online to their estate plan. So if you moved states, if you had a kid, bought a home, sold a home, whatever the case might be, think of it as like a, you know, a, a financial plan that you have for your clients, whereas it's a living document that changes all the time. So that's what we've done with estate planning is you can log in, you can make changes. Um, we don't charge anything for changes the first year. And then after that, we have a subscription model that a client can opt into to make sure that their estate plan is, is always um, up to date. Got it. So it, it sounds it sounds fairly straightforward. Um, and, and to reiterate something important that you said is you can actually sign up, um, go through the entire process, see your essentially your final documents online um, before you even have to pay a dime. Um, if you do elect to go ahead and finalize the documents so they can be sent to you to be executed and you know legally uh, become legal, um, then that's when you charge the payment and then the documents are sent. Is that correct? Yep. Yep. That is spot on. Correct. Yeah. And so um, talk to us, uh, talk to us about the, the cost. So let, let, let's say somebody wants to go through and, and put a will in place or wants to set up a, a trust. Um, you know, what do you guys look, look like in terms of cost for those services? Yeah. So very transparent with pricing. The two products that we offer is a trust and it's $4.99 for a married couple. $399 for one person. And then the will based estate plan is $159 or $89 for one person. And then these are all very comprehensive, meaning they include your healthcare docs, your power of attorney, HIP authorization are included in both the trust and the will. And then if it's an estate that we have attorney support in, and a client says, I really need legal advice, or I would, or um, then it's an additional $200 to be able to talk to an attorney. So for a trust, you're looking at $699 all in with an attorney. And what's, what's been really unique with our, with our attorney launch is we, we actually did it in a way that a client gets, gets access to the attorney for a full 12 months. So you have the consultation, go through the process review the documents with the attorney, make sure you're understanding it. But a lot of the times people have a ton of questions around after the, after you complete the, the estate plan. So they get full access to the attorney for a full 12 months um, as a, as a peace of mind. Yeah. And you mentioned earlier, after the initial 12 months, they have the option to opt in to like an ongoing service that gives them the ability to make changes and things like that. So what is, what does that look like? Yeah. So for a trust, it's $39 um, a year. And then for a will-based plan, it's $19 a year. And outside of just being able to make amendments and changes to the estate plan, we we actually just launched this. We're super proud of this. Uh, launched about seven, 10 business days ago. And it's what we call shared access. And this is, this is really helping families in being able to share. So for example, I complete my estate plan and I can now share my documents securely electronically with my executor, with a beneficiary. We even just launched this with our financial advisors so that if an advisor is using trust and will, they can actually get access to the documents directly online. And most people, they create a trust or a will most common people think it's, oh, it's what, what's best is I'm going to go to my safe deposit box at the bank and store it in there. It's actually, it creates more barriers for people to access it. 
So we're what we're doing is making sure that one, they get access to the documents, and then two, that they actually understand the role that they play. Um, in banking, I would have people come in and say, and I, I remember the frantic looks. Someone passed, I am a successor trustee. I wasn't aware of it, or maybe I was, but I don't understand what this actually means. So we're helping just educate on on people named within the estate plan to just make the full process from creating documents to distributing assets once once uh once a trust is being settled, just a much better and easier process. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned the sharing functionality because I, I saw that was launched recently, and I thought I thought that was pretty cool, and that's that's clearly a, a great step in the right direction as far as helping people share their intentions and their, you know, their wishes as far as their state plan and, and what roles people play and things like that. So I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty fantastic. Absolutely. What, um, you know, this podcast is, is women's retirement radio. It's, it's about retirement for women and their families. And, and when you think about the word retirement, Andreas, what comes to mind for you personally? Mm, that's a great question. I think of one having a place back in Colombia with a farm and horses. Two, I think of me just spending so much time with my loved ones and friends. So I don't not married yet, but that's something that I, I definitely that's a you know a goal of mine is, is to build an amazing partnership with uh, with someone. And for us to have kids and, and in retirement, it's just spending time with grandkids. I think that that sounds uh, really, really fulfilling. And then three is, is something I, I try and practice even today, not thinking about retirement, but, but especially in retirement is, is giving back. I think we have so much to be grateful for in our lives every single day. And for us to say, I was able to work X amount of years. And for me to be able to give back, I'm very passionate about um, immigrant rights and being able to be part of a nonprofit and be very involved in that is, is something that, that definitely um, catches my attention. And then traveling, traveling sounds amazing. Being able to, I'm a big hiker. So being able to go and see different places, but at the end of the day, what really comes to mind is just spending quality time um, with people that I love. And what I took from earlier in our conversation, it sounds like you're already doing a lot of that. I mean, would, would you say that's fair? I mean, as far as your, yeah. not, just, not just your trips back to Columbia, but you know, your, you know, friends and family and, you know, it sounds like you've kind of got a family vibe there at trust and will. So it sounds like you're already fulfilling at least some of those things. Definitely. Definitely. Yes, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I, something I think is important is, 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 for people to realize they don't have to wait to retirement to, to do a lot of the things that are important to them. And, and, you know, congrats to you because it sounds like you're already doing that as far as you're, you know, volunteering with um, an immigrant rights nonprofit and tra- and doing some travel, hopefully more travel once we kind of get more back to <laughs> post pandemic normalcy. Um, For sure. But, but spending time with family and, and, you know, marriage and kids and maybe grandkids and things like that are, are down the road, but um, you know, good, good for you. It sounds like you're already doing a lot of the things that really, you know, kind of, are rewarding and fulfilling for you. So I think that's fantastic. Thank you. And I think it's something that like, that's why I'm so grateful of my uh, career in banking. Cause I saw a lot of my clients when they went into retirement and a lot of people can struggle with it. I think there's, there's um, you're essentially losing your uh, identity depending on if, if your identity was tied completely to work. So it's like, well, who am I as a person outside of what, you know, what I did for 30 years at the company, right? So I think it's like, it's really, really important for us to to truly understand our values, what's really important for us. What do we, what do we, what do we truly care about? Like what is worth our time and being able to have that and like put some thoughts and, and, and action behind what truly fulfills you as a, as a human being. 
I, it's interesting you brought that up because I, I had a um, I, I was recording another podcast episode with an, another guest uh, recently. She's in the healthcare field, and she uh, she actually made some similar comments about how um, often uh, people uh, it it seems to generally be more men than women, but but it can certainly be you know both. Um, so much of their identity is tied into the work, and so once they retire, if they don't retire to something whether that's part-time work or volunteering or spending time with family or pursuing a hobby or something like that, they, you know, they, they have all this time on their hand. They kind of go from what I like to think is they go from full-time work to full-time living and they're not really prepared mm -hmm. for the full-time living. And it can actually have, um, it can actually have severe um, health consequences. Um, it can actually like um, put them at more risk for health complications and things like this, because they just, they lose a lot of their, routine and purpose and social interaction and like mental stimulation, it can be, it can be really challenging. So I think you, I think you raise an interesting point there that retirement is not simply when do you stop work? Um, have you saved enough? And, and now you can really enjoy yourself. Although, the, although clearly that's important. I think it, it's also about thinking about it and planning for a smooth transition into the next chapter of your life and, and finding things that you enjoy doing or, or want to learn uh, about uh, to keep your life interesting and to keep your mind sharp and to uh, still have social interaction. I think that's yeah. I think that's not talked about enough, but I think it's very important. Yeah, 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 hundred percent. And you know, finding that community, finding that uh, what you're passionate about, and also too, I think it's uh, you know, in, in retirement, it's it's not just this this what we should focus on so much is like, okay, am I, am I ready for retirement? It's like live your life today you like that's something i try and practice as much as i can right it's it's not this one destination that's going to provide me like this 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 happiness and everything that i'm looking for uh cuz a lot of times we get we get to that destination we're like this is it or we don't truly find that happiness so um something i i just try and practice as, as much as i can it's 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 a work in progress but be able to understand like today the present moment is is really what it's all about but, you know, obviously, you know, having a plan in place uh, so that you can whatever retirement looks like for you is something that you can definitely plan towards. Yeah, well said. And I couldn't agree more. I think it's I think it's uh, I think it's worthwhile to pursue and strike a healthy balance between mm -hmm. being being well prepared for tomorrow, but making the most of your life today and each each, mm -hmm. you know, each day along your you know life's journey. Um, and clearly. Clearly, estate planning plays an important part of the planning for tomorrow. Um, so, so when you think about your work and what Trust and Will does, um, what kind of impact do you think that has on women and their families as they're planning for their own transition into retirement? Man, that's, um, yeah, I mean, it really comes down to, I think, you know, a couple of things that I brought up, but I think it really comes down to everything you've worked for and you're going into retirement, where do you want those assets to go? How do you want them to be distributed? What is something that you're really passionate about in terms of uh, a nonprofit or you know, education for, you know, when you look at legacy planning, what does that look like, right? Yeah. Uh, grandkids, kids, like what, what type of impact do you wanna leave behind uh, when it comes to that? So. I think it's, yeah, I think that's, that's really what it comes down to. It's that. And then two, um, which I can't believe I hadn't brought this up, but really just making sure that, that your loved ones don't have to go through the headaches of probates and all that. So the peace of mind that you're really leaving behind is, is instrumental. Yeah, I think uh, I think peace of mind is key. Uh, I'm, I'm glad mm -hmm. you I'm glad you highlighted that. But uh, but yeah, ultimately, it's it's about, you know, making sure that you have a plan in place, not for just the rest of your days while you're living, but also uh, thinking about your family, your loved ones, the organizations that are important to you, um, that you want to, um, mm -hmm. you know, that you want to be able to support or uh, continue to uh, have a, an impact in their lives uh, when you're not around anymore. So I think mm -hmm. I think all those are great points. Um, you kind of already touched on a couple of these things, but, um, and I, and I know, I know you're not working 18 hours a day, uh, although I, I know you, I know you are busy and you, and, and you do work a lot cause you love what you do, but when you've got an hour or two to yourself, 
Um, how do you most enjoy spending your time when you, when you, when you do have a little, a little alone time? Absolutely. So man, um, every single day, always, uh, 20, 30 minute walk with the dogs. That's, that's like my go-to. I'd love to just be, uh, there's a little Canyon right by my house. So, uh, being outdoors. And then if I'm not with family, gosh, it's usually I'm, I'm hiking a lot. I love to run, um, mountain biking. I was really big into it. I've been a slacker the last year, year and a half. I need to get back into that. So anything that's outdoors related, um, especially now working from home, I, I try and be very intentional around, Hey, I'm done with work. I need to be outside because I just need that sun. I need that energy. So that's what comes to mind. That's what, that's what makes me feel alive and, and, you know, super grateful to have that in my life. Yeah. And you mentioned dogs. So you have more than one dog. Yeah, I got two, two little ones. My, my coworkers, they, they're part of all my, uh, my zoom meetings and, I don't know what they would do if we actually go back to the office because they're they're loving me. <laughs> yeah, uh, be, being at home all the time. What kind of what kind of dogs are they? A uh, little Malty Poo. His oh, name nice. is Marley. Yeah, and then Layla. She's about eight. She's a golden cocker spaniel mix. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, my uh, uh, we we've got one dog and she um she actually got up and left. She was snoring. Um, you might have heard her in the <laughs> background earlier. She likes to camp out next to my desk and make, uh, make noises while she's sleeping. But uh, I think that's awesome. That's, that's great that you've got, you know, a couple of pups. We're, we're dog people. So uh, I, I know what it's like to have a, um, a four-legged child in the house. So, for sure. Uh, for that's, sure. Uh, that's great. As we, um, Andreas, as we start to wrap up, um, and this has been a great conversation, by the way. So thank you so much for joining us and investing the time to kind of share a little bit about yourself and trust and will, but, um, my pleasure. Yeah. As we start to wrap up, if there's one thing that our listeners could take away from our conversation uh, today, what would you want that one thing to be? Don't put it off. Don't put off not creating an estate plan. There's a ton of people that think we will get to it later. I'll get to it later. I'll get to it later. And then you never get to it. And then something happens. So take the action today. It is, it is, it is truly one of the best decisions you will make for your family. And I think that's a, I think that's a great closing advice. And with that in mind, uh, for those listening, if you think trust and will might be a, an estate planning solution, you would want to investigate or learn more about certainly feel welcome to reach out to me. Um, but if, if they want to reach out directly to uh, the company to learn more uh, what's the best way for them to get in touch and learn more about trust and will, or to maybe take the next steps if they're interested in doing so? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, website is trustandwill.com. So that's where you'll be able to go get started. You can chat, you can, you can schedule a phone call and we would be grateful for the opportunity, give you some education. And then if you do decide to move forward, um, walk you through the full process and, and, uh, and get that very important document uh, documents in place. Yeah, and um, a couple of things I'll add to that. If you go to the website, um, you'll you'll see uh, on there they've got uh, trust pilot ratings. Um, their customer service is like top notch and very rarely very highly rated. So um, uh, Andreas isn't just giving lip service to their focus on customer service. Um, the other thing I'll add too is that um, through my affiliation with Trust and Will. Um, if you want to use Trust and Will, get in touch with me and I can give you a link that'll actually get you 10% off of their pricing. Um, I, don't get, I don't get paid anything. It's just because uh, Trust and Will um, has chosen to uh, spread the word um, through financial advisors in addition to other channels. So if anyone's interested in learning more about Trust and Will, uh, feel welcome to reach out directly to the company. But if you'd like to reach out to me, um, get in touch and I can give you a link to their website that'll save you uh, 10% on their pricing. Um, Andreas, um, this has been a fun conversation. Um, I, I've enjoyed uh, talking about uh, trust and will, the importance of estate planning, uh, the opportunities that people have to put these, these legal instructions in place for themselves and their families and their heirs. Uh, before we wrap it up, anything else you want to add or anything else you want to, uh, to contribute to the conversation before we, before we close it up today? No, Russ, just thanks again for, for having me. And then too, as, as a financial planner, I think it's so great that this is a conversation that you're bringing up to clients. 
Uh, I, awareness and education is such a crucial part of this. So we we love working with you, and we just uh, think it's so important for an advisor to to have these conversations. So thanks so much for having me again. Yeah, thanks again, Andreas. This has been great. Uh, I've enjoyed working with you. I know uh, I know the the small handful of of folks I pointed your your way uh, have had a really great experience. So I look look forward to continuing. Uh, our relationship and, and maybe having you back on the podcast uh, podcast at some point down the road to uh, to continue the dialogue. Um, Absolutely. That'd be fun, Russ. Yeah. And uh, everyone, thanks for listening. Um, again, this is Russ Thornton. This has been uh, Women's Retirement Radio, and uh, I will look forward to catching up with you on our next episode. It's Russ again. And before you go, I want to provide a brief disclosure. You should consult a financial advisor familiar with the specific circumstances of your unique financial situation before making any financial decisions. Nothing in this broadcast constitutes a solicitation for the sale or purchase of any securities. Any mentioned rates of return are historical or hypothetical in nature and are not a guarantee of future returns. I'm a financial advisor and an investment advisor representative of Wealthcare Capital Management, LLC an SEC-registered investment advisor based in Richmond, Virginia. The views discussed in this podcast are my own and may not be consistent with or represent those of Wealthcare Capital Management.